dear friends, there is much to be thankful for. Above all right now, I would like to thank you for your love towards myself and my family. All your support, your letters, your prayers, it is such a great strength to us. So many men and women in these prisons are forgotten about and spend years without a care from anyone on the outside. Many unjustly held, but they have no voice, no rally call, no one to say that what is happening to them is not right. They live their lives thinking that no one cares, and they are all alone. I thank you for not letting us be forgotten, for uniting to protect and bring awareness to all that is happening to us. My words today are for the forgotten, for those who have had to live with this unjust system, this wicked system without hope from any chance of correction, for those that are innocent, and for those that know that they have done wrong, but are not being allowed to make it right, for those that stole a dollar and are being punished like a bank robber. My voice is for the many wives, husbands, children, and loved ones that have had their love ripped from them and their lives turned upside down. Those that have experienced the wrath of this system and know that it is anything but just. These words are for you, and I know your pain. My family and friends know your pain. We see it now and let's consider things that we have not considered before. Here in the hole is very isolated. I have not been out for many days. They will not authorize any call to Lisa and my children or make any calls to any of those who support me. Only calls to my attorney are allowed. No matter how much those connected in law enforcement try to convince me otherwise, it is clear that this system and what these people are doing is wicked. To treat people this way is not right, and each person makes their own choices. Each person chooses to work where they work, act the way they act, and say what they say. Of course, the uppers in power will also be accountable. Each person makes individual decisions, and each will be held to those decisions. You, I, and them. Each of us own ourselves, and each of us own our decisions. Never have I harbored any hate for anyone. I do not intend to begin and hope that all listening will do the same. This message is not about hate or revenge. It is about light, casting the light on the darkness. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. The wickedness in here is deep and needs the light. I know our Heavenly Father did not send his children to this beautiful earth to be chained and caged by other men. This system is very, very wicked. I feel it very strong each time I see the inequality of the guards towards the other men and women held in here. Each time I see a young man, an old man, or anyone in between chained up and led around like a monster, it is so very, very wrong. God is not happy with this. He will vex this nation for it if we do not change this wicked thing. He did not send us here to do harm to each other. I cannot express to you enough of how sure I am of the Lord's unhappiness with treating each other this way. It is so very unnatural. So very many families torn apart. So very many lives hindered. Yes, some recover. But for most, prison is the worst thing that could be done for them. By the time they get out, they are either broken or hardened. Very few people are changed in the right way. How could they be? when the system, the law, does not allow them to repent. In fact, the law makes it illegal and almost impossible for them to truly become whole from their mistakes. This is the reason why there are so many reoffenders. To incarcerate a man only demoralizes him, and he will react in resentment, either quietly or openly. Incarceration is not rehabilitation, and it is not correction. To correct, one must be able to do all he can to make his wrongs right. He must restore his victim the damages. Through the process of restitution, the perpetrator will learn the damages caused by his actions. He will learn what the victim felt by his actions and also learn how hard it is to earn what the victim lost. Through restitution, the perpetrator has the best chance of acknowledging the wrong in his actions. The greatest opportunity to learn how his actions affect others 
and the ability to correct the wrong as right as he can, and then being motivated to do it no more. By locking him up for many years or decades, it stops this process. It actually makes it impossible for rehabilitation, correction, and repentance to occur, not to mention all the other damaging effects it has on the soul and body. Surely we do not believe that by forcing someone into a cage for years while treating him like an animal, he will then have the desire to change for the better. One cannot force another to be good. The changing of a heart can only be done from within. The individual must choose to change themselves. No power or influence can or ought to be maintained to force a change of heart. Only by a sincere effort to persuade by long suffering, by kindness and pure knowledge, without hypocrisy and without guile, reproving with clarity and then showing an increase of love towards him. Through this process, the person will see that those trying to correct are not his enemies, and then he may choose to change his own heart. No system of incarceration will effectively foster a change of heart. A system of restitution based upon Christian principles, will. Did you know that the Bureau of Prisons was not established until 1930? What did we do for the first 160 years? In the beginning, we did what the Bible teaches us to do. We did not imprison millions of people for years. No, we did not. We had speedy trials, and those convicted were required to restore damages to the victim. The death penalty was not feared to be used on those who committed heinous offenses, and the jury gave the final word. So why have we turned our backs on the principles of the Bible? Why are we now incarcerating more than three times the amount that China incarcerates? There is one reason and one reason only. Our penal system of incarceration is very, very lucrative. It creates lots of jobs and lots of power and wealth to the few and the select. The American people in general have lost their faith and courage and will and will almost do anything. The American people in general have lost their faith and courage and will almost believe anything or pay any amount when it comes to safety. It has been an easy sell. Those that benefit from the billions spent on arresting, trying, and incarcerating their fellow man keep telling the public that we need more money to keep you safe. Society is getting worse and worse. We have to arrest and punish more and more. When in reality, systems of incarceration never work to better society, and they never have. This system is not designed to succeed. It is not designed to keep the public safe, only to rob them. And in return, creates the very problem that people pay so dearly to eliminate. My friends, it may seem that I am upset in articulating these matters in, these, in this way. Well, I am. Of course not at you, but at the wickedness of a person and people that would choose gain over the welfare of their fellow man and over the welfare of their country. This is why I will not excuse each person that has chosen to be part of it. How could they make their life ambition knowing that something is so wrong, that it does not work, how could they be silent and not push to correct, to make aware, to truly serve and protect their brothers and sisters? Whenever I ask these questions to those working in the system, the response always comes down to this. I do not want to lose my job. I know the system is broken, but I have a mortgage to pay. To take liberty from your brother for money and to not disclose the lie to people footing the bill is wickedness. How could it be anything else? When I see a man who has not held or laid eyes on his wife and children for years, be escorted in chains by other men to a little room with a video monitor, knowing that his wife and children are on the other side of the wall, but he cannot be with them, hold them, or kiss them. When I see his captors acting like this is normal, just a job, even as if they are being benevolent, it makes me want to shake them, to wake them up, to shout, can't you see what you're doing to your fellow man? When I think of the motive, when I think of that man and his loved ones and their pain, 
when I think of the victim who will never get paid back, but the officers, the prosecutor, the judge, the jailer, and all of them who have continued to gain so much from his incarceration, when I contemplate these things, it brings me to sorrow. It is so wicked. Most of these men in here should not be here. They should be home with their families and loved ones. If convicted of a true crime, then working out the damages they have caused another person. The law should require and administrate the restitution process. And once the victim is restored damages, then Bull should be free to live and move on. Probation and tagging someone as a felon for life, causing him to literally be a third-class citizen in his own country, has proven to be counterproductive and is wicked as well. Imagine any time you get pulled over for a simple traffic violation, you are forcefully met with multiple amped up officers pointing guns at you and your family's faces. Or imagine trying to provide for your family to get a job with a felony record. Or trying to defend and protect your family with a butter knife. And if you're seen with it, officers will shoot you on the spot. Did you know that if you are a person with a felony on your record, you can't legally wear a protective vest? It is true. If a person with a felony on the record is caught wearing a protective vest, he faces years in prison, the same as possessing a gun. A person with a felony on their record is stripped of their right to protect and defend themselves and their families. And they have to live this way the rest of their lives. And they cannot even vote to change it. Think about that. Think about this. If a person with a felony on his record knew that if he kept clean for a period of time, like five years or so, and then could have his record cleared, wouldn't that motivate him to do good? Of course it would. But to keep him down, tagging him as a lifetime criminal, never freeing him, causes him to lose hope of a better life. What about our Christian values? What about the doctrine to go in peace and sin no more? It is wicked for our society to never forgive. It is wicked to never allow a person to be free from his mistakes. This type of wickedness always comes back upon the people, just like it is coming back upon us now. My friends, I do not say these things in ignorance. I am living on the inside. Most of these men and women in here are not what we have been led to believe. We, the taxpayers, are being exploited by a system of incarceration that is a complete failure and our liberties because of it are being threatened. Let me throw a few statistics at you, calculated from the New York Times Almanac of Record. In the United States, five out of every hundred people will be arrested today. One out of every 404 U.S. residents are behind bars. One out of every 32 adults are under correctional supervision. 68% of those who have gone to prison are rearrested in, thir in three years. 52% are back in prison within three years. It costs an average of $70 per day to incarcerate a person in the United States. U.S. taxpayers paid out $65 billion for adult prison facilities in 2005. The cost of prisons in the U.S. has increased over 1,400% since 1980. Operating costs surged from $3.1 billion in 1980 to $31.4 billion in 2000. A citizen in communist China is 12 times less likely to go to prison than a citizen of the United States. Imagine having a business where if you wanted to increase your income, all you had to do is tell your security guards to go drag people off the streets and force them to be your inventory. Then imagine doing this at a rate of 1,400% increase in just a few years. I have been involved in a few good businesses over the past several years, but nothing with returns such as these. It is beginning to make sense to me why Civic Corps of America, this very prison for profit, counts their prisoners every other hour. If inventory gets a little low, all they have to do is make a call to the U.S. Marshals 
and the judges will send a fully loaded bus of men and women in chains. My friends, this is the very opposite of freedom. A man in America has a one in ten chance of going to prison in his lifetime. My father, brothers, friends, and myself are those men. We have hurt nobody, threatened no one. We did not lie, steal, cheat, or abuse. We have no victims. We have only led lives of peace and have tried to love and help our fellow man and serve God. Yet here we sit. We have not held our wives or babies in a year and a half. My four-year-old is now six. My nine-year-old is now 11. My 10-year-old is 12. And my baby, who only knows me as a voice over the phone, is now two. We have missed nearly all of our children's birthdays twice. For 488 days, most of us have waited trial and still have no set date in sight. I have heard it said that our trial will cost upwards to $100 million. My friends, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. My friends, this is not about punishing people for doing something wrong. It is certainly not about correction or rehabilitation. This system is a powerful bureaucratic jobs program designed to funnel billions of taxpayers' hard-earned money into the pockets of government employees, such as the judges, prosecutors, jailers, officers, the marshals, the FBI, and so on. Safety is the promise. People are the excuse. Crime is the result. And bureaucrats are the benefactor. This system is disguised as a necessity for peace and safety, when in reality, it is one of the primary causes for increased crime in America and continues to plummet us into extreme debt. Incarceration is not the solution for crime and correction. It never has been and never will be. The heads of these government agencies understand this. But to change it is too painful for them and they simply have no motive to diminish their power, influence, or income. None the same. The solution, as proven in history and justified by time and nature, is still the same. It is a penal system based upon Christian principles of restitution to the victim. I will finish now by reading God's law and how he has instructed us how to administrate law. Please listen closely as I read in Exodus. I am the Lord thy God, which brought you out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not want your neighbor's house or anything that is your neighbor's. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren and make merchandise of him or sell him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. If one man smite another with, his, with a stone or with his fist, and he die not, that keepeth in his bed, then shall he that smote him pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep. Breaking in, he should make full restitution. And if he have nothing, then he shall be put into servitude for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand, he shall restore double. If a man cause his beast to eat another man's field or vineyard, then the best of his own field or vineyard shall make restitution. If a fire break out and catch in another man's property, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. For all manner of trespass, or for any manner of lost thing, which another challenges to be his to be his. The cause of both parties shall come before the judge, and whom the judge shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. My friends, the majesty of God's law 
is a system of restitution, not incarceration. The best way is God's way. Thank you. And I'm in Bundy.